Thank you, and, and thank you for inviting me, and thank you for all the ideas that have come up already. I would like to continue on the, on the same kind of line. How, how do we go further in, in this uh, kind of situation where it's very difficult, extremely difficult, to push forward nuclear weapon-free zone in cases where there's one or maybe several nuclear weapon states? The Middle East is not the only example with Israel as a nuclear weapon state. Also Europe has France. And, and so there's a general problem of, of how to proceed in cases where these countries are not willing to uh, abolish their nuclear weapons. And so the first question for me would be how to reduce the threats or eliminate the threats of nuclear weapon use even if the weapons stay. And, and in this case, I would like to talk a few words about um, unconditional, uh, legally based se negative security guarantees. And, and, and I have explored this question in my recent book, Renegotiating the Nuclear Order. And, and so just first three comments on the current situation in relation to these, these negative security guarantees then a question, how could this be achieved in a general case? And then what could they contribute to the Middle East? First of all, my first point is that in the NPT, when they originally took place, there was this just idea that it would be reasonable that the nuclear weapon states agreed not to attack states that have abstained from nuclear weapons. This was never concluded, actually, the US and, and, and Soviet Union opposed. And the situation ended up with a general comment from the P5 that they would not attack unless the country was allied with the nuclear weapon state. The second comment is that these guarantees that do exist in, in general statements are, are now being watered down. The first issue was uh, not to attack if they were allied with the nuclear weapon state. Now also the WMD, the bio biological and, and um, chemical weapons, if an attack takes place with these weapons, then the nuclear weapon states could attack with nuclear weapons. And furthermore, the second nuclear posture review in, in the US also takes up international uh, critical infrastructure as a problem. If critical infrastructure is attacked, then nuclear weapons may be used. And we know all the proposals of de-escalating conventional wars, wars with nuclear weapons. So there's a watering down of these principles. And, and secondly, if you look at the protocols, the current five nuclear weapon-free zones have in their treaties, where the P5 are supposed to confirm that they will not attack with nuclear weapons, you can see that only the Latin American Treaty is signed by the US. The US has not signed any of the others. And even the Bangkok Treaty has not been signed by anyone. So actually, the, all the countries in the nuclear weapon free zone are extremely insecure about whether they may or may not be attacked by nuclear weapons. The reason for this is very simple because nuclear threats have to be ambiguous. And the nuclear weapon states are not willing to make clear commitments when they would not attack with nuclear weapons. This is what is often called calculated ambiguity. It's, it's an integral part of deterrence. So the nuclear weapon states have an interest to maintain this calculated ambiguity, which actually is opposed to the interests of all the countries in the nuclear weapon free zones. Now, the question then is, how could the nuclear weapon free sta uh, zone states, how could they achieve unconditional legally binding negative security guarantees that under no condition, nuclear weapon states would not attack them with nuclear weapons? And, and so here I have studied the situation and, and actually, there is the way, first of all, the states in the nuclear weapon-free zones, they are about 118 states. Secondly, 
they have a double commitment to the nuclear weapon free status. They have signed the NPT and they have signed a treaty regionally and, and uh, the expectations that they would be interested in nuclear weapons is not there. Finally, none of the countries that have been in these zones have ever left a zone and started a nuclear weapon program. So it's an extremely credible situation. The problem with these um, states, 118 states or the five regions, is that they are not well organized. They are organized in different ways. The Latin American is the only one that's well uh, and thoroughly organized. And secondly, that they lack a global organization. If the five nuclear weapon free zones would have a global organization to guard their interests, they actually could threaten the NPT and say that they would leave the review conference unless, unless there's a nego nego renegotiation of the NPT so that unconditional uh, negative security guarantees can be uh, given and they will be, if they are either annexed to the NPT or part of the NPT, they would be uh, legally based. So in this way, there is also an example which I can refer to. There was an example in the early phases of the nuclear weapon, uh, non, the NPT negotiations of Mexican am amendments were actually the Latin American nuclear weapon free zone actually used their leverage and did have a change in policy. The US actually changed their policy and signed the Latin American uh, nuclear weapon free zone, which is the only one. Now, the last comment is about, and this is of course something to be discussed, but what could this mean for the W uh, free zone in the Middle East? What would this uh, actually uh, present as a solution? First of all, all the countries that would be part in this nuclear weapon free zone would have to receive security, unconditional legally based security assurances from the other nuclear weapon states and also from Israel and if, if the case is also from Iran. So this is then the question, uh, would uh, the countries that are willing to participate in a zone, would they be uh, would it be acceptable to them to, to have these uh, uh, negative security energies that actually would be then guaranteed by all the nuclear weapon states that are members of the NPT? The question is, would, first of all, Iran. Iran is a committed NPT member. It was one of the countries that suggested the NPT and they have also supported the zone. They were a country that suggested the establishment of the zone, not the NPT. So Iran is a committee country and uh, has sometimes discussed, I followed the discussion, sometimes they have discussed whether they would leave the NPT. This is the hardliners especially. They have even collected names to leave the NPT, but they have never taken initiative to do it. So they would be committed to this situation and also if the GCPOA is saying then they would be even more so committed to the NPT. The question is would it be possible in any way to get Israel to issue um, unconditional legally based security assurances to the states in a zone of Middle East? This is of course a critical problem and I, I think it probably can only be solved by the US guaranteeing in a legally based way the actual fact that, that Israel would not attack any of the countries in the zone. My point here is that even if countries would stay outside a zone, it, would, it should be possible to tie them into a situation where the guarantees do exist when they are, are enforced. And as far as I can see, it's one of the very few ways we can pro pro proceed, not only with the Middle East, but also with Europe or with uh, Far East Asia. I will end here and I'll ask any questions you may have. Thank you.